Just there, while our Clarissa Ward was reporting in Kabul when the Taliban swept into power as the US military withdrew. She's there again now and joins us live. Good to have you there for us, Clarissa. Uh, so a year since the Taliban took over, the United Nations saying that 95% of Afghans are going hungry. Uh, they don't have enough to eat. Uh, you have a unique ex uh, perspective. Uh, you were there a year ago, back now. Uh, Clarissa, just explain for us the changes that you've witnessed and in what areas the Taliban have wound back the clock. Well, Linda, the challenges facing Afghanistan right now are enormous. And today, for many, is a really painful reminder of all that has been lost. Others have been celebrating, some because they love the Taliban, others simply because they were delighted to see an end to many years of war that led to so much suffering. But now everyone in this country is really focused on the grave humanitarian crisis and just on trying to put food on the table for their children. It's a three-hour journey from Shakila's home to the center of Kabul. But each morning, she and other women make this walk, driven by hunger and the need to feed their children. Their destination is this bakery, one of many across the capital, where crowds of women now sit patiently every day quietly hoping for handouts. So all the women have been pressing pieces of paper with their phone numbers into our hands. They're desperately hoping that maybe we can help them. Shaquilla tells us on a good day, they might get two or three pieces of bread. And every morsel counts. Were you doing this a year ago or has the situation become worse in the last year? There's no work this year, she says. My husband has a cart, but now he only earns 30 to 40 cents a day. One year after the Taliban took power, Afghanistan is isolated and increasingly impoverished, largely cut off from the global banking system and the foreign aid that once funded almost 80 percent of this country's budget. It is also unmistakably safer one thing the Taliban has been able to improve is security. Outside Kabul's airport, shops are open and the streets are calm. Excuse me? She, you say it's first. Cover my face? Cover. Okay. A far cry from the chaotic scenes we witnessed last summer. He told me to cover my face, but he doesn't want to comment on that truncheon he's carrying. Yeah. It's my... Tens of thousands risked life and limb to try to flee the country. Stay behind him. Stay behind him. Many feared for their lives. Others that the Taliban would take the country back to the Middle Ages. For these girls, that fear has come true. They were just a year out from graduating and the Taliban announced a de facto ban on girls' secondary education after sixth grade. Now they have improvised ways to defy the ban, setting up unofficial schools where they continue their studies. Nahid Sadat's dreams of a diploma may have vanished, but her drive has not. I always say to myself that uh, I am so powerful, I am strong, and these things can't bring my... Uh, my aims and my dreams and uh, what, what I, I want to do. Do you ever feel scared? Yes, uh, it's so risk for, for us that uh, we, do, we, we don't cover our face and we study our lessons. You're very brave. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Girls' education is one of the main reasons no country in the world has yet recognized the Taliban government. A point we put to Foreign Ministry spokesman Abdul Kahar Balki. When will the Taliban allow teenage girls to go back to school? From uh, the perspective of the government, uh, there's a, a range of mix of issues uh, that has uh, led to the uh, temporary suspension of uh, secondary schools. The, the most important and significant uh, part of this is that the policy of the government of Afghanistan uh, is education for all citizens of Afghanistan.
and yet all citizens of Afghanistan are not currently able to get an education. What is the holdup? It seems that uh, international actors are uh, unfortunately weaponizing uh, the issue of education. Uh, instead of coming forward and interacting positively, uh, they are trying to find moral justifications uh, for some of the inhumane policies uh, of sanctions, which is leading to the collective punishment of the entire people of Afghanistan. Do you want to see girls going to school again? The policy of the government of Afghanistan is very clear, uh, and that is education for all citizens of Afghanistan. The Taliban says it wants to see peaceful and positive relations with all countries, including the U.S. But those prospects were dramatically diminished when the head of al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahiri, was killed by a U.S. drone strike in a villa in downtown Kabul just over two weeks ago. Uh, we've made it very clear that the government of Afghanistan was unaware of the arrival or presence of uh, Mr. Zawahiri in uh, Kabul. Uh, so far, we have been unable to establish the f as a fact, as a matter of fact, that Mr. Zawahiri was indeed uh, present in Kabul. Isn't that almost more frightening, though, the idea that you're claiming potentially the leader of al-Qaeda was here in the center of the city and you didn't even know about it? Again, we contend that notion that he was even present here. Uh, but even if he was, uh, these types of uh, incidents happen everywhere in the world. Um, but they really are... don't. I mean, how can the U.S. possibly trust the Taliban leadership, though, to stay true to its promise that it will not allow sanctuary to be granted to terrorist groups? Uh, if we look at the Doha Agreement, the uh, articles uh, that, are, that define the commitments of the government of Afghanistan, all of them have been fulfilled. And if we look at the commitments that the United States of America has made, sadly, uh, they have not fulfilled a single article. Uh, but we're hopeful and we continue to urge the United States uh, to adhere to that agreement. It's a brazen position that complicates efforts to unfreeze funding to help the Afghan people, millions of whom remain hungry and reliant on the kindness of strangers. CNN has spoken, Linda, to the U.S. envoy to Afghanistan, Tom West, who basically confirmed that there are now no short-term prospects for the U.S. starting to recapitalize Afghanistan's central bank. And there have been a number of reasons for this in the past, but I think the one that has really clinched this or cemented this position is a concern about the sheltering of Ayman al-Zawahiri and what that portends for future uh, potential of sanctuary being given here to other terrorist groups. And as long as you don't see any improvement or any type of normalization in the relationship between the U.S. and the Taliban, and you don't see those funds starting to flow freely again, you can be sure that the humanitarian crisis here is only going to get worse, Linda. And Clarissa, uh, certainly an interesting interview you did with the Taliban spokesperson. Still no clear answer on why teenage girls are not allowed to go to school, but great to have you and the team there for us in Kabul. Clarissa Ward reporting there.